good planty peeps my name is lily and welcome to peace lily plants today i thought it would be fun to talk about a few planty things that i no longer do because i've been collecting plants since uh the beginning of 2020 right around the time the you know what started since then i've changed a lot i've been through a lot of plants uh killed a lot but also kept even more of them alive so yay me anyway i realized that uh from the beginning or even from a year ago to now there are things that i used to worry about and stress about that i just don't don't really think is that important anymore so i would like to share those things with you today and i have seven different ones to share i noticed that three of them have to do with watering and three of them have to do with buying things and one of them is just a general thing so before we dive right into it please like this video if you feel like it it's just kind of a helpful thing and subscribe to my channel if you want to see me post a video like once a month sometimes but sometimes more than that uh just be gushing about plants and talking about planty stuff so at this point in my plant parenthood journey i've got a few notes that i'm looking at here i've transitioned to what i what i would call a seasoned plant parent where i'm not completely new to the hobby I've been there, done that, been going around the block for a while now. There's a ton of stuff I still don't know about plant care, especially with the more finicky genera. But I have had more of my plants for more than a year than not. Up to now, you know, a year ago or so, more of my plants were new. Most of my plants I had only had for, you know, a week, a month, a few months, a year max. But now I've had almost all of my plants for a year or two years. I still get new plants every once in a while, but most of these have been around on this channel for quite a while now. Most of the ones you see back here. And I want to say, uh, please don't interpret anything I say in this video as being judgmental. I know that everybody has different paths. There are some people who've had plants for a long time, and like me, the novelty has worn off to a degree. We still love our plants, but we're not in that fever of new plant parenthood that we once were. And then I know some people who are still in that fever dream, even after having been into plants for a couple years, still acquiring tons of plants, still learning a lot. And I totally have love and respect for that. I mean, I love watching plant tube videos. There are some people who never get caught in that fever dream aspect of collecting plants. They have restraint from the get-go. And if that's you, kudos to you, because I do not have that level of self-control. At least I didn't used to, but I'm kind of getting better about it now. I'm still shopping, still spending money, still buying things and acquiring things, but um, more in different areas of life than in plants. So many of you watching may relate to my circumstances, which is that I do not do this for a living. Plants is a hobby for me, but I do have a job that has nothing to do with plants, and I have a social life, and I have other responsibilities, and other interests, and other hobbies. And you kind of have to bear that in mind as to why I am not doing certain things that I used to do. Also, bear in mind, some of what I say may just indicate how life has changed from being under the, you know what, to now. Because most of us have less time that we're spending in the house. There's more to get out and do in the world. And uh, how do we balance being a person who exists in society and also staying home and taking care of our plant babies? Somehow I have gotten this far in the video and not even mentioned the fact that with each of my seven things, I want to also show you a plant that has been thriving lately, 
just because when I watch a plant video and there's no plants in it, it makes me kind of sad. So we're gonna enjoy looking at plants on this journey of talking about these things. So the first plant I want to show you is my Syngonium Yano Carti Road, also known as Syngonium Erythrophyllum. This plant is growing prolifically. I can't even tell you which leaves are new because I feel like so many of them are new. And just a absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous specimen. And these leaves are to die for. The dark green on the front and the burgundy on the back. I cannot get enough of this plant. Such an underrated one, in my opinion. The first thing I don't really do anymore, and we're going to do the, the three that have to do with watering plants first. First one, I don't overanalyze my plants on watering day. I feel like in the beginning, and a big part of this is the influence of other planty people on YouTube and Instagram and whatnot, I felt a pressure to be sort of hyper vigilant in analyzing every single plant on watering day and figuring out does this plant really need water today should i wait and water it tomorrow should i wait and water it in two days should i not water it for a week i feel like me being so uh wary about each individual plant made watering day be a lot more of a hassle than it needed to be. You know, balance and everything in life. Yes, it's good to look at your plants, not indiscriminately water them all, but just take a moment to assess each one and say, does this need to be watered? But at the same time, I'm not gonna add an extra hour to my tour of watering plants by sitting there and thinking too critically about every single one. If it needs water, I'll water it. If it doesn't need water, I'll probably just leave it alone until the next watering day or until I randomly look around one day and it just happens to look super, super thirsty. Another recent favorite of mine is this Syndapsis Tattoo which I just showed off in my most recent Syndapsis collection video. But I'm really loving it because look at this new leaf! Holy cow! That thing is humongous. And it's about to put off another one right there. From the time of me filming that video to now, it's only been a little over a month. So can you believe that it put off that humongous new leaf and it's about to put off another one i am so so happy about this so the next two are going to be very closely related to the one i just told you my second one is that i do not use the water meter and that might be controversial to some people especially i feel newer plant parents might be like oh my gosh you don't use the water meter how do you know if your plants need to be watered? But just like with overanalyzing plants, using the water meter all the time just makes things take forever. I'm a normal person. There's only 24 hours in a day. I have other ish to get done, okay? I don't have time to go around every week or every two weeks and put a water meter in a hundred different plants it's not gonna happen now if there's a plant i have that is going downhill or i don't know there may be special circumstances where i would use the water meter but i'm not gonna lie you guys the water meter is currently sitting in a drawer and I have not gotten it out in like six months. You know, with, with wisdom and experience, I just, I don't feel like I need it. And yes, sometimes I'll put my finger in the soil to see if a plant wants to be watered. But for me, like that's sufficient. Just put my finger in. No need to go get a meter 
and make a whole big shebang out of it. Here is the third plant I wanted to show you guys. This is one of my philodendron micans. I do have like three of this plant because it's amazing and why not? But uh, I think this particular specimen is just looking really healthy, really bouncy and beautiful right now. Man, the bounciness of this plant in my hair could be this bouncy every day. I'd be so happy. Woo! Bouncy, 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 bouncy. The third one, very intertwined with the first two. I don't always water my plants until water comes out of the hole at the bottom of the pot. Again, some people might be crying blasphemy at that because according to plant tube, that is like the biggest deal in the world to make sure water comes out of the hole in the bottom. I'm not gonna say that I never do that because I do do that sometimes. If a plant looks like it's really thirsty, then I'll maybe make sure water comes out and make sure I really thoroughly got it soaking. But as I said, I've had most of these plants for at least a year, if not longer. But even if we just went with one year, let's say if I water every 7 to 10 days and there's 52 weeks in a year, we'll say I water my plants approximately 40 times a year. So with most of these plants, I've watered them again and again and again and again and again so many times. And it just gets to the point where you kind of just know in your mind about how much water needs to go in each plant. And so that's why I don't always check to see that water is coming out of the bottom. Because I knew in my mind I probably gave it the adequate amount of water. And you know sometimes just to give myself a sanity check, I'll water a plant about the amount that I was going to water it. And then I'll water it just a little bit more. And then water will come out of the bottom. And that reassures me like, oh, so I was giving it just the right amount of water. So with these three things having to do with water, it's just, you know, I've, I've watered these plants so many times. I know what they look like when they're thirsty. I know what they look like when they're not thirsty. And after a point, you just... Uh, don't necessarily have to have the reassurance of seeing something on a water meter or seeing the water come out of the bottom to know that you're you're doing it right. This is my lemon lime philodendron. Wait, no. Yes, yes, lemon lime heart leaf philodendron. You know, a normal heart leaf, but also looking like a neon photos and. I recently potted two up together in this one pot and it looks so good. So healthy. I absolutely love this plant so much. It just makes me look forward to spring, honestly, because the pop of color is just too darn cute. So now we'll move on to the three that have to do with shopping for plants. One of them, well, it's not really about plants, it's about shopping. Buying extra pots. What I used to do every time I went to a plant store was get a few pots while I'm there. Because I felt like, well, I'll probably use them eventually. And, you know, maybe when I was at a stage of collecting more regularly, maybe that logic was a little bit more in line. Now, now that I'm not acquiring a lot of plants and, and just in a general sense, to save money and space and whatnot, I am not gonna go out and buy pots unless I specifically need them. I have a few extra pots. Sadly, they're mostly all small, but all of my plants are getting more mature and I actually need bigger pots. Wanting to film a video about that, so stay tuned. Anyways, I just don't need to be buying pots that I don't need. I think what would be a lot more responsible from my wallet and just in general is to look around and say what plants need to be repotted and actually make a list of the pots I need and then go get them 
and not just buy Fox for the fun of buying them. This is my tiny little philodendron Nariform, aka Philodendron Jungle Boogie. Such a cute little guy. Uh, realistically, I wish I had a specimen where the leaves were humongous. Because a big, mature jungle boogie is an absolutely beautiful plant, in my opinion. I still like my little guy. And I recently repotted because it uh, got root bound. And now it is putting off a new leaf here at the base. So, growing slowly but surely. Maybe I'll have a mature jungle boogie in like five. 10 years. So another thing I do not do that has to do also with shopping is I don't constantly look at plant websites and or constantly order plants online. I used to do this all the time. Like literally every single week I was ordering a plant on Etsy. I was constantly looking at Steve's Leaves and Peace Love Happiness Club and Etsy and all the plant stores and looking all on Instagram and looking at Dade Plant Company stories all the time. But I just don't anymore. I don't know. The novelty of it wore off. I got tired of doing that. I do, like I said in the beginning, I still online shop. I still look at things to buy online, but... They're not plants. I don't know. I've just gotten over that. And even though I love my plants, I just don't feel that need to constantly have to have more. The next plant I want to show you guys is... Ah, oh, so cute. A Euphorbia milii pink flower or pink star. Something like that. It's just a normal little Euphorbia. A little tree looking guy. And it's putting off the flowers. Look at that one. And then I saw somewhere on the other side. Where did it go? Way over here. It's putting off another one as well. I love this so much. I feel like I want more euphorbia. I'm not really buying that many plants. But if I were going to buy one today, it would be another euphoria. Euphoria. Euphorbia. So my sixth one overall, my third one that has to do with shopping, I no longer contemplate buying exorbitantly priced plants and or actually act on buying them. So first of all, my most expensive plant is the one that I'm going to show last. So I'll wait and say the name of it in a minute, but it cost me like $280. And I can tell you straight up, if it were today, I would not own that plant. Because I simply wouldn't pay that much for it. Over the past couple years, all I've wanted is a strawberry shake. And I saw that Day Plant Company was selling some specimens. And they were like seven or $900. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder if I could save up for that blah blah but you know what nowadays i just don't want any plant that badly if it's gonna be that expensive i can live without it no big deal i guess it really boils down to the fact that the novelty of plant collecting just has worn off so the the brain fog that my would lead one to be influenced to pay so much for a plant. That fog has cleared from my mind. So if anybody ever wants to trade a strawberry shake or if I ever see one at a plant swap or something for a very reasonable price or, you know, a monster uh, Thai constellation or, you know, any of those hot button super expensive plants, if someone will trade me one, if I see one very reasonably priced and a swapped, awesome. I probably would go for it because they are absolutely beautiful plants. But I'm not going to sit around and contemplate uh, saving up for them or sit around and look at plant websites and lust after them. Whatever. I just don't care that much anymore. 
I care about my plants, but I don't care about plants enough that I'm going to be like influenced to pay hundreds of dollars for one. The last plant that I want to show you is my most expensive plant, my most valuable plant, $280, but I will say in retrospect, it was money well spent because this is just such a good specimen oh god as soon as i picked it up it came off of its little pole here well i'll have to fix it more in a minute but this is my philodendron white princess it grows so prolifically i keep thinking to myself i'm going to propagate a little piece of it but i don't want it to be actively growing whoops i just ate it a little bit but i don't want it to be actively growing a new leaf when I do that but the problem is that it puts off a new leaf and then literally one to two days later it's already putting off another new leaf this one at the very top I accidentally broke it off because it's getting so tall whoopsie but you can see on that stem there right on my eyeball it's putting up another one already. Look at this. Here's a little baby that I already propagated off of it. That's already taken off quite well. And you see, it's got a new leaf on the way too. So, man, I don't know if it's my specimen or white princess in general. Mine is a super prolific grower, super rewarding, and not hard at all for a rare plant. So my last one is a general thing, and that's I don't stress about things that other plant influencers tell me I should stress about, or not that they tell me I should stress about, because really it's pressure that I put on myself that mostly we all put on ourselves to be like other people and I'm sure I can think of a lot of examples and I'll put them on the screen when I think of some more but the main one that was coming to my mind when I thought of this for this video is that I don't stress about the fact that I don't really want plants on moss bowls. I used to stress about that because you know, you look up plant tube and the, you see that everybody else has all these plants on moss poles and it just seems like that's the way to get the biggest, most beautiful plant. I don't know, maybe it is because maybe that's the closest to imitating nature. But you know what? I don't have the time or the motivation to have a bunch of plants on moss poles that I go put in the shower and then have to go put back in their spots every week. And I definitely don't have the patience to like get a little squirt bottle and water the moss poles every couple of days. It's not gonna happen. I don't want to, and I'm starting to realize that's okay. It's okay not to have plants on moss poles. That doesn't make me invalid as a plant tuber or a plant parent. And neither does anything else that maybe you don't want or that you don't do that it seems like everybody else wants and everybody else does. So I'm over it. I'm over that pressure to have to live up to some kind of certain standard to be a legitimate plant parent. If you have plants, if you love plants, you're a legitimate plant parent. So anyways, that's my video for today. Thank you for sticking around to this point and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what are planty things that you no longer do or what did you think of the different things that I listed. I'd love to hear what your opinion is. Hope you have a great day today and one more thing, wherever you are and whatever your circumstances, bloom where you are planted, honey. See you in the next one. Bye!